Hello, baseball fans. Welcome back. Uh, thanks for uh, checking out my video. Today, I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, how you reverse engineer a baseball sim. Um, specifically, I'm going to talk about the batter up game from the late 1970s. But first, I'm going to talk a little bit about my background. Then I am going to uh, talk about some general considerations when you're trying to reverse engineer a sim. And then I'm going to talk about my experience as I recently uh, reverse engineered the batter up game and created a spreadsheet that will generate player cards. So with that, let's get started. So quickly, uh, my background, I um, recently retired uh, from uh, a role in corporate finance and uh, I have a fair amount of experience with uh, Excel spreadsheets and and I've done a little bit of uh, computer programming in the past and I, I think I have an analytical mindset. Uh, back in 2022, uh, I came across my old game, which I have called Vintage Baseball, and that rekindled my interest in baseball sims. I did a lot of work to uh, tweak that game between then and now. Um, and then I've built uh, spreadsheets for several games in addition to my own. Um, I can create cards for Status Pro 3rd Edition now, uh, Sports Illustrated Baseball, and then, uh, as I said, Batter Up. Um, and I've done some other analysis of uh, some other games like Payoff Pitch. And you can see videos uh, that I've posted related to several of these items. Um, you can see my email at the bottom there. I'm glad to share my spreadsheets uh, if, you, if you're interested or if you just have comments. So with that, um, I wanted to talk about some general considerations. Um, but specifically, I have that the gear icon up there. I wanted to mention that uh, in case this video gets long, you can speed it up. Uh, if you click on the, the gear icon in, in YouTube, and it'll allow you to change the replay speed. And with that, um, let's get started. So there are some key considerations when you're reverse engineering a sim. Um, for me, one of the most important is, was the original sim accurate? Now, I put accurate in quotes because... You know, there can be relative accuracy or absolute accuracy. I talk a, a bit about this on one of my other videos. Uh, obviously, you want the good players uh, to be reflected uh, as good in the sim and the not so good players to have uh, lower ratings or lesser skills. Um, that's probably most important. Uh, I, I am much interested in the absolute as accuracy, knowing that that's not ever completely achievable, uh, but the statistics and the math are, are very, very important to me. Um, it's important to keep in mind what data and tools were available at the time the sim was developed and take that into consideration. Another concept I've talked about before is precision. You know, does the, the game design allow for uh, precise um, formulations of ratings and outcomes. So those of you that know Status Pro, it works off a of base eight system, uh, which essentially means that there's 64 potential chances on a pitcher card and 64 on a batter card for a total of 128. Um, many sims use three D6 dice uh, and, and those allow um, portioning the outcomes across 216 chances. Um, some, some sims use D10s and, and, and slice things into, you know, a hundred, hundred, uh, different slices. So very precise. Um, a D20 can enter into the situation at times like the stratomatic splits and, and there can be a combination of these. It's just something to keep in mind. Um, uh, I know as much as I love, uh, the illusion of precision. Um, the reality is, um, 
it's probably not as important as I make it. Um, but sometimes it does lead to some frustrations where, uh, you know, my spreadsheet will calculate that somebody deserves half a chance uh, for a triple. You know, so do I make it zero or, or, or one uh, and, and maybe throw off uh, some of the other uh, allocations. Another one that I like to focus on as well is how were intentional walks treated. I tend to exclude them from all my calculations. And uh, I think a lot of Sims do that now, but I don't know if they always did. Related to all this is, you know, what do you do if you think the original Sim was not accurate? Um, I tend to kind of take a balanced approach. First of all, it's very possible that there's something I don't understand or they understood better than I do. Uh, these were smart people, obviously, when they created these uh, Sims. Uh, and I'm thinking of the ones like in the, in the 70s, for example. Uh, on the other hand, you know, there's a lot more data that can be parsed a lot more efficiently now. And so, um, you know, at times I just uh, go with, with my gut and, and use some different formulas or, or rate people differently than the original. Um, I also try to maintain the feel or the spirit of the original sim. Um, you can get a sense as to what they were trying to do. Uh, if I can think of some examples as I'm going through this, I'll, I'll mention, mention that. And then, you know, do you try to add some new features or homebrews or not? And then I'll talk at the very end about the importance of testing your results. So, with that, um, let's just talk a little bit about understanding the game engine. That's really where you start. You know, is, is it a 50-50 model where, like Stratomatic, where the pitcher and the batter uh, have equal influence on the outcome? Uh, or is it pitcher first, then the batter? And payoff pitch is a good example of that. Sports Illustrated Baseball is a good example of that. And then, um, you know, is it, a, is it a hybrid? And I call Status Pro a hybrid because it is pitcher first, then batter. But at least in the modern formulas, the, the math behind it really works out like a 50-50. Like a uh, kind of has to. Um, and then I put a fourth one here. I'm just learning about APA. Um, I'm just learning even how to say it. Uh, just kidding. Um, but, uh, you know, it's more of a batter first, then the results can be modified by the pitcher. So uh, the, the, the point is that there are statistical implications of the game engine, and, and it's important to understand them. So with those general comments, uh, I want to talk about this game that I relatively recently became aware of called Batter Up. Uh, it was published for three seasons in the late 70s. Um, there are two guys who are credited with creating it. Um, however, their whereabouts are unknown. Uh, similarly with the company, uh, it's, it's kind of hard to find any, any real information about it. And, and quite frankly, uh, it's, it's likely these guys are very old now and may, may not even be around. Uh, my whole point there is that we, we did, me and, and some other folks have done some extensive internet searching to try to see uh, if we can find out information about the game or their creators or their formulas or whatever. And, and, and the reality is um, there's, there's little to be found. Um, so I'll talk briefly about the features of the batter up game. Uh, it is a pitcher first, then a batter um, formula or engine. It's almost identical in that respect to Sports Illustrated Baseball. And then it also has uh, the unique dice with unequal probabilities. We'll talk about that in a little bit. Um, it, it also has numbered play results, which are looked up on what you would call boards in APA. So in that respect, it's, it's very much uh, APA-like. Um, it has uh, separate stealing and running ratings. Uh, a feature that I think is important it is, is allows the pitchers to influence the, the prevalence of home runs. It only has generic lefty-righty splits, but it also has bunting and fielding and ballpark effects and injuries, etc. My suggestion is 
if you're interested in this game, check out Kurt Berglund's uh, two batter up videos where he walks through these uh, uh, features in great detail. And then we've created a Facebook group uh, for the batter up game. And um, it's reasonably accurate. And we've posted uh, the game charts, uh, some, some teams, uh, really everything you would need to play the game. This just gives you an idea of what the cards look like. So uh, the pitcher cards don't have a, a result on every roll. The dice rolls are 1 to 30. Um, if there is no result, then, then the play passes on to the batter card and you roll again. And you read the results and you look them up on the result charts. Um, I just posted an example of a APA card. Um, and you can see, you know, there's arguably some similarity there in the game design. Um, I have a comparison to Sports Illustrated Baseball, and I think this is really critical in the reverse engineering. If I had not previously built a spreadsheet to create Sports Illustrated charts and cards for players, uh, I would not have been able to do uh, batter up, I'm, I'm pretty sure. Um, so they have similar game engines, um, just uh, like SI Baseball. For the most part, the type of hit, single, double, triple, home run, is driven by the batter card. Um, Sports Illustrated had a combined stealing and running rating, which wasn't ideal. Um, but for batters, they had explicit left-right splits, which... Uh, uh, better up does not um and so on um interestingly in batter up the pitcher cards do have a lot more hits on them mostly singles uh, whereas sports illustrated uh hit chances on a pitcher card were were somewhat of an exception so um i won't belabor that let's go on so what were the initial steps to um, reverse engineering this game. Uh, I had to understand the game engine and dice probabilities, which I pretty much just talked about. Um, I had to really read the rules and understand the charts, and that included the play result boards, um, you know, for all, all types of at attributes that have ratings. I had to understand uh, what those rating ranges were, like one to five or, or, or whatever. And also I, I needed to study the, the charts themselves to understand the, the probabilities and so on. And then uh, for any given rating uh, that you're talking about, um, it's good to understand how they're distributed. For example, you know, what really constitutes average are the ratings distributed on a bell curve or some other, some other shape? Um, and that's kind of important if you want to retain kind of the look and feel of the original sim. And then I had to go to the actual card, uh, pitcher card, batter card, analyze the contents, the layouts of those cards, uh, and then of course set up a spreadsheet. As far as ingredients to success, I would say analysis is the starting point uh, logic and maybe past experience. Uh, there's a lot of trial and error. I would say I'm calling this divine inspiration, but I'll talk about this in a minute. And then persistence. Um, there are at least two occasions where I was ready to give up on this uh, batter up project because I just didn't see a way forward. Uh, it just wasn't making sense. This is a brief uh, diagram of the dice probabilities for batter up. Uh, they happen to be identical to the Sports Illustrated probabilities, but you roll three special dice. Um, the results come out uh, from one to 30. And, um, you know, in one case, in this, in this case, uh, chance or, or roll number 10 only has one chance out of 216 uh, possibilities about half a percent, but then you have um, 
dice roll 26 that will come up a little more than 8% of the time. So uh, it makes it kind of interesting when you're playing the game um, because um, some people don't like it, but it's actually an interesting feature of the game that, you know, when you roll, you don't know exactly uh, whether it's a, a good roll or a bad roll, although this, this chart gives you, gives you a general idea. So, uh, you know, the rolls in the mid-20s uh, are the most common. Okay, so one of the things I did was, was analyze uh, the player result boards, the play result boards. This is an excerpt from that analysis. And uh, the play results go from 1 to 50. And you can see there's a fair amount of consistency across uh, the numbers. It's not completely uh, consistent, but for, for the eight different uh, on-base situations, uh, for example, one, two, three, or four is a home run in every case. Um, five, six, and seven is a double in most cases, but the green ones you see there uh, could be turned into an out if you have a, uh, a clutch fielder. So um, the fact that there was this consistency was very useful. Otherwise, the, comp, uh, the calculations in the spreadsheet would have been uh, significantly more complicated um, than, than they were. So, um, you know, that was... Um, that was a key first step in understanding how the game was designed. So in terms of creating the actual cards, let's start with the pitchers. So, you know, um, the pitcher cards can have hit batsmen, wild pitches, and pass balls. Um, it's common to have them, but in, in very small allocations. I won't go into it, um, but it took a day or so to figure out a good formula for replicating uh, the hit batsman and and other other aspects, uh, but I'm very happy with with the way it way it turned out. Uh, you wouldn't know the difference between one of my cards and one of the original ones, I don't think, in in that respect. Walks were a different story. I had the the Sports Illustrated formulas. I had my own thoughts as to how it should work, but I just couldn't figure out how they allocated walks uh, on the pitcher card. And again, I was about ready to give up and I don't know if I dreamed the answer or whatever, but I got the idea, well, why don't I just take a sample of pitcher cards and, and map them up, the, the walk allocations, map them up against a metric which was walks per adjusted plate appearance and adjusted plate appearance as an aside excludes intentional walks and maybe a few few other things like sacrifices. But in any case, I typed in the data, I built this graph, and even without doing the math, you can see there's almost a perfect correlation. So magically, I had a formula to assign walks to a pitcher card, which is in the red circle up there, but it's a standard correlation formula. So you take, roughly speaking, 220 times the calculated metric and subtract 5.8 and magically you have the number of walks to put on on the pitcher card. Um, this was a, a key breakthrough in reverse engineering. So then I moved on to hits and again my formulas were were not coming up with the answer uh, so I reverted to this correlation analysis um, as you can see, the correlation isn't as good. Uh, it's still there, but it isn't as good. Uh, and you can see there's kind of a bunching right around 10. A lot of pitchers get, get 10 hits on their card, 10 hit chances. Um, nonetheless, I use this because uh, I concluded uh, a little later that it really doesn't matter what you put on the, the pitcher's card because you'll compensate for it by the outs that you put on the pitcher card. Um, this is where it got really interesting. Um, how many outs do you put on the pitcher card? Um, 
And conceptually, the answer is you need the right number of outs so that you arrive at the proper batting average against a statistic uh, for the pitcher. And, and you're assuming in all this that the, the pitcher uh, in the aggregate face the league average batter. So one thing you have to do is calculate a league average batter. But first thing I did is I, I created a visual model of how it works. And, and basically, um, you know, a few things can happen. So first you can have a wild pitch or passed ball. And if you have that, then you end up re-rolling on the pitcher card. So a certain number of the two, 216 chances Will, will result that way, and then you just re-roll, and then you're you're left with uh, the re-rolls, which is the rest of the chart. And you can see that several several results can go straight across to the final result. So if you hit a walk or a strikeout or uh, another out or a hit on the pitcher card, it's it's the result, and you don't even include the batter. And for everything else, you kind of assume that. Uh, the batter swings away, I'm using um, Sports Illustrated terminology. And then uh, you roll, and then you can have, again, several several outcomes, walks or hit batsmen or strikeouts or, or, or et cetera. So um, I struggled mightily to try to figure out this out formula. And what you see in the background here, maybe you can see in the background is, it was a lot of manual trial and error. This is a handwritten version of what you just saw, and you see a bunch of calculations on the side. And finally, as you can see over here, finally I figured out that this could all be done with algebra, and you can solve for the number of outs that you need. And, and so, um, as you can see right here, I came up with, with the formula. Uh, I tried it out and it worked perfectly, but you can you can just see that uh, reverse engineering a complicated sim like this can be a bit of a struggle. Uh, again, I'm crediting some some inspiration from from above or or somewhere for allowing me to figure out the the formula. Uh, I could I could go into a lot more detail, but. Suffice it to say, this is probably the the key part of the of the of the sim and the engine and and the and the card making spreadsheet. So um, once you know how many outs there are, then you want to figure out how to split them up between strikeouts, um, ground outs, and flyouts. Uh, generally speaking, so I uh, summoned the uh, Correlation analysis, again, very similar to walks because my original formula did not work and it's not exactly the same as Sports Illustrated. And once again, I came up with a very, very highly correlated relationship. And so I was able to use that, that um, uh, correlation formula in my, in my spreadsheet. Um, so moving on. Um, once you know how many hit chances, walk chances, out chances, whatever, um, you need to be able to allocate them to the, uh, the result chart, the board, if you will. And there's 50 possible outcomes uh, on the boards. So I had to do an extensive analysis of the pitcher cards um, to determine which play results were used and, and in what frequency. And I've ultimately come up with a pretty good handle on that. Um, and then um, I had to do the same thing with, with, with the outs as well. And so you, you don't have to really study this too closely, but uh, this is a snapshot of what the spreadsheet looks like. And what you find out is that not every one of the 50 outcomes uh, can show up on a pitcher card. And so, um, uh, you know, when I actually compute what, what goes on the card, I use a combination of uh, fixed allocations because certain things show up almost on every card. And then certain ones are uh, randomly assigned 
uh, using a random number generator. And I would say this works pretty well. Uh, if it was programmed in a computer program, it would probably be cleaner, but uh, it works pretty well with, with only a, manual, a minor amount of manual intervention. Um, I mentioned that pitchers can influence home runs and uh, some of that logic is uh, included on this part of the spreadsheet as well. As you can see, uh, kind of right in the middle of the, uh, the hit section here um, on this page. Um, one of the things that um, Batter Up has, which I think is, was a little bit ahead of its time, is that there was a pitcher hold rating and it would range from minus one up to zero and then up to plus one. Uh, most pitchers actually were rated zero, um, but basically the hold rating is an adjustment to the stolen base rating um, to make it more or less likely that the person will be successful. Um, I had to start from scratch here. I did a lot of research. I found what uh, purports to be the stratomatic formula for this, and in the end, I came up with my own approach, which combines um, the percentage of caught stealing uh, when the pitcher was on the mound. And then I also incorporated pickoffs and I treated those as an extra caught seal stealing. And um, I used that adjusted metric and compared it to the league average. And then any of the outliers, basically about one standard deviation away, uh, were rated either a minus one or a plus one. And this seems to work out pretty well. Um, you know, when I compared it to what they had in the in the original game, there were some inconsistencies, but I'm, I'm happy. This is one of these cases where I'm happy doing what, uh, what, I, what I settled on. Um, Matter Up also has a pitcher fatigue uh, system. Uh, without going into detail, it's very similar to Stratomatic where the fatigue or stamina factor is defined uh, kind of in, in context of innings. And, you know, just like Strat, there's ratings for starters and re relievers. And uh, I ended up modifying a formula that I had in my own uh, sim. And basically, I take the innings pitched per start for starters or innings pitched per relief appearance for relievers. And I round that number up to the next whole number. And for the most part, that's, that's the, you know, that's the uh, stamina rating. I did decide, though, that if you have a pitcher who starts and relieves, I'll give them an extra 0.5 of an inning uh, before I do the rounding uh, for their relief rating. So batters. Um, the underlying logic of the batter cards uh, relies heavily on the logic uh, that I used for my uh, Sports Illustrated baseball spreadsheet. And these are uh, based on the infamous uh, Randy Cox formulas. Um, essentially, what you do is you uh, take the, the batter statistics, and then for things like walks, hits, batsmen, strikeouts, you adjust for the fact that some of the walks that he will get and, and strikeouts and so on will actually come directly from the pitcher card. So you have to take that out of, um, out of the equation, uh, if you will, and, and then calculate how many remaining chances he should have for those, those items. Um, as I said before, the singles, doubles, triples, home run mix is based on the, um, on the batter's actual season performance. Um, you know, there are some hits that are passed through from the pitcher, um, as we said. And so I, I did make an adjustment in, in, uh, in this batter up spreadsheet, uh, to basically increase his doubles, triples, and home runs, uh, relative to his singles, because a lot of singles and a couple doubles will, will actually pass through. Uh, from the pitcher to the batter. So um, 
Again, this was all kind of math, a little bit of algebra, uh, but I think I ended up in the right place. Uh, similar to Sports Illustrated, uh, the batter card assumes um, uh, that he's facing an average pitcher. And so uh, you can actually take the batter card and calculate the implicit batting average of that card and, and, and prove that you know, it should be, have statistical integrity. So um, similar to the pitchers, I had to figure out how, how to allocate um, the hits and the outs. Um, I did, again, an extensive outcome uh, analysis of the player results, the outcomes. Uh, I'll show you in the background here. But this started out um, as a manual effort where I was, I was looking at specific cards Apologies, and, and calculating the, the frequency of occurrence. Um, you can kind of see that on, on the right. Some are more common than others. Um, ultimately, what I did is um, I was able to get some of this uh, player card data in, in a spreadsheet, and then I was able to automate this analysis. So I have a pretty good idea now of how the original game allocated um, allocated the, the outcomes or the play, play results to the batter cards. That said, I know the frequency and when, and I know the average amount when, when a given outcome is, is on a batter card, but it's really hard to know, maybe it was random, but it was really hard to know if there was any pattern or logic to how, how those results got allocated. Um, Again, I, I ended up uh, having a combination of fixed allocations and, and then random assignments for the less frequent outcomes. Uh, the challenge, uh, very much like with the pitchers, but, but more so here, is that you have 30 dice rolls and 50 potential uh, result outcomes. And, and so, um, you know, how do you fit 50... 50 things in a box made for, for 30 things. So um, without going into it further, uh, that's, that's kind of what I did for hits you see at the bottom. And then I had to do the outs. And again, I did the, the, the analysis of the, of the boards. And then, um, as I said, there, there's a lot of challenges um, one of the things I did, both for the pitchers and the batters, is I um, split the results between ground outs and what I'll call air outs. And there's a statistic actually in baseball reference that allows that to happen. Uh, and then even within ground outs, I tried to make a little bit of an adjustment for uh, the propensity for somebody to hit into a double play or, or not. So it's just my own attempt at customizing uh, the results to the, to the individual player's actual experience. Uh, I don't think that um, the original batter up cards had, had any such logic behind it. In fact, sometimes when I check it, it seems a bit opposite of, of what, what I would have expected on the cards. Um, Getting near the end here, but um, you know, fielding ratings was was an interesting one. Um, essentially, what I did is I looked at the ratings of a bunch of cards, and I'll show you here in the background. Apologies for this, but I actually just took a bunch of cards. This happens to be from 1976, and I listed out uh, you know the ratings by position that I looked up there. Uh, fielding percentage, and um, and then from that I was able to discern, uh, you know, what the cutoffs were, and I was able to prove, quite fortunately, that that um, fielding percentage indeed was the the basis for um, assigning fielding ratings in better up. So I I stayed true to the original sim sim in that regard. Um, 
baseball, I'm sorry, batter up also has a clutch fielding rating or a range rating, if you will. And similar to what I did in the SI spreadsheet, I used the RTOT statistic from baseball reference to determine if a player deserved this, this clutch fielding rating, which uh, on, a, on certain outcomes can actually turn a hit into an out. Um, I developed ratings for things like bunting and stealing and base running and so on. And, you know, you can learn more about those in, in some of my other videos. Uh, but I pretty much use the same logic. One interesting thing in Sims is trying to figure out throwing arm ratings for catchers and outfielders. Uh, I ended up making my own formulas. Um, it's really hard to do this accurately, I would say. Um, and so I kind of cheated and, and I do have access via an app to the Stratomatic throwing ratings. And um, so if you have those and you want to type them into a, a specific cell, uh, the spreadsheet will actually convert those ratings to, to batter up ratings and um, override any of the other underlying formulas. Uh, I do the same thing for base running uh, speed as well. Uh, this entire ratings approach that I've described here is, is described more in black and white in a Word document. And so if you want it, uh, just let me know. Um, my email was provided at the beginning of this uh, at the beginning of this video. So I want to wrap up. If you're still with me, thank you. Uh, I want to wrap up on one last thing, which is testing. Uh, it's very important to test your work when you're reverse engineering a spreadsheet uh, or, or reverse engineering a sim. I built a separate spreadsheet that does the testing. It basically either simulates the results or just literally calculates the expected outcome for a given matchup. So I would match up, you know, various pitchers against uh, an average batter card. I would match up various batters against the average pitcher card. Uh, I would compare my results to the actual results uh, experienced in the... Um, you know, in the real world, I would compare my results to what the original cards had on them and so on. And um, I don't know, in the background here, you can see um, where I documented some of that, not very fancy, but you know, in many cases or most cases, uh, what I did confirmed. So here you had, uh, I was matching um, Thurman Munson up against the average pitcher and you can see his batting average turned out to be 296 in my, in my test uh, compared to 302 in real life. Uh, to be honest, that's about as accurate as you're going to get. Um, his slugging percentage turned out to be 437. Uh, it was 432 uh, in real life. Um, and then you can see kind of in, in red the, the same uh, statistics for his original card. So everything was lining up, I would say, fairly closely. Maybe strikeouts were a little off. But, um, you know, you really have to do that testing to have any confidence. No matter how logical your approach is, um, you know, you can, you can come up with uh, a wrong, wrong answer, a wrong conclusion. Um, occasionally in this testing, I, I ended up going back and tweaking the spreadsheet. Uh, as I said, I think the original batter cards were pretty accurate. Maybe not so much as uh, for the pitcher cards, which was uh, not unexpected. And then in, in the other ratings, there were some inconsistencies. Uh, I didn't talk about the home run ratings, but some of those didn't seem to make complete sense. Uh, as an example. Uh, again, check out uh, the Facebook group. Uh, name of it is at the bottom of this page. And, um, you know, give, give my video a like if you liked it. Uh, more importantly, if you have a comment, either send me a comment in the email or, or put it at the bottom of the video. Uh, thanks for hanging in there. Talk to you later.